If you're working in a manufacturing industry, it's important to maximise profits. So when you do a chemical reaction, you need to know what quantities are involved. You need to know this so that you can work out how much product you're going to get, and this will determine what size your container must be. You also need to know how much starting material you need. You'll need enough to make the quantity of product requ you require, but you don't want to use too much or you'll waste reactants. In chemistry, this calculation is done using stoichiometry, which is just the mathematical process of working all of this out. You're all familiar with chemical equations. They tell us the quantity of reactants involved and the amount of products produced. For example, if we take one molecule of nitrogen and react it with three molecules of hydrogen, we'll get two molecules of ammonia. If we took a dozen molecules of nitrogen, we'd need three dozen hydrogen molecules and we'd get two dozen molecules of ammonia produced. Since we know that a mole is just a very big number, we can also make the same comparison using moles. So, if we took one mole of nitrogen, we would need three moles of hydrogen and it would give us two moles of ammonia. Similarly, if we double the amount of nitrogen, we would double the amount of hydrogen that we needed and this would also double the amount of ammonia produced. If we halved the amount of nitrogen we started with, then the other quantities would also halve and we'd end up with only one mole of, nit of ammonia. So a balanced equation is going to be very important in all our stoichiometric calculations. Let's try a more complicated equation. If we had two moles of our reactant, you can see from the equation that it needs 15 moles of oxygen to react with. We can also see that it will give us six moles of hydrogen from the equation. If on the other hand we only have one mole of the reactant, we have to take the coefficient of our reactant from the equation and divide it by two. So if we do that, we have to do the same thing to the product we want to calculate. So we divide the coefficient of the water from the equation by 2 to find out how much water we would actually produce. This is very similar to maths. What you do on one side of an equation, you have to do on the other side. So it shouldn't be too unfamiliar to you. But what happens if we only know the amount of oxygen that we had to start with? We can still use the same method. If we have only one mole of oxygen to start with, then we divide the oxygen coefficient by 15 to get the 1. So therefore we have to divide the coefficient of the product we want to find out by 15 to pr predict how much water we will actually make. We call this type of calculation working out the mole ratio. So to express this mathematically, we can say that the mole ratio is calculated by taking the coefficient of what we want and dividing it by the coefficient of what we know. So in this case, if we have two moles of reactant and we want to know how much carbon dioxide produced, we write this directly under the equation. The quantity that we have got is the reactant and the quantity that we want is the carbon dioxide. So to calculate our mole ratio, we just divide the coefficient of what we want, the carbon dioxide, by the coefficient of what we got, the reactant. So our mole ratio, in this case, is just 14 divided by 2, which gives us 7. I cannot stress strongly enough how important setting out is in this type of calculation. It may seem trivial at the beginning, but as the problems become more complex, it becomes increasingly important to have a visual picture of your information. I found that it's easiest if you write the quantities known and what you want to find out directly under the equation, so you can see exactly what you're doing. How could we find out how much carbon dioxide we would make if we had three moles of reactant? We can work this out by using the mole ratio. We know from our equation that 2 moles of reactant needs 15 moles of oxygen and produces 14 moles of carbon dioxide and 6 moles of water. So we know that 2 moles gives us 14 moles of carbon dioxide. So therefore 1 mole will give us 14 divided by 2. So it follows that if we have 3 moles, if we multiply the left hand side by 3, then we need to multiply the mole ratio we've calculated by 3 to work out how much carbon dioxide we produce.
Similarly, if we'd only had half a mole of our reactant, we could calculate the mole ratio of 14 divided by 2, and in this case, we'd multiply it by 0.5 to work out how many moles of our carbon dioxide we produce. Try these examples to make sure you understand exactly how to do this. From this equation, we can see that if we have 2 moles of ethane, it will react with 7 moles of oxygen to give us 4 moles of carbon dioxide and 6 moles of water. What if we had just 1 mole of ethane? How much water would we be able to produce? Well, first we need to look at our mole ratio. We take what we want and we divide it by what we've got. So we divide the 6 by the 2 and that gives us 3 as our number of moles of water that would be produced. What about if we had one mole of oxygen to work out our mole ratio again? This time we're trying to find carbon dioxide, so we look at the coefficient of what we want and divide it by the coefficient of what we've got, so we'd have four divided by seven. If we had a slightly smaller number, a smaller, smaller amount of oxygen, in this case, 0.65 moles, we'd just take our mole ratio, which we already know is 4 divided by 7, and multiply that by 0.65 to calculate how many moles of carbon dioxide we've got, we'd get. Now, you're not only restricted to doing this from the reactant side, you can actually do it from the product side, which is important in industry. I mean, if a, a manufacturer wants to know how much carbon dioxide he's going to produce, he needs to know how much reactant he's going to start with. So if we've got 0.5 of a mole of carbon dioxide here, we want, to, we want to find out how much ethane we need to start with. So we need to work out our mole ratio. So what we want in this case is the ethane, and what we've got is the carbon dioxide. So first of all, we would divide the 2 by the 4 to give us our mole ratio, and then we multiply it by the 0.5 to tell us how many moles of ethane we're going to need to do this reaction. Similarly, if we only had half a mole of water being produced, how much oxygen would we need? We look at our what we want, divide it by what we've got, so we'd have our 7 divided by 6, and then multiply it by our 0.5. And these calculations are all done in a very similar fashion.